Hai, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And very good morning I hope all of you are doing well We will continue our video or our class on EAS 3513 Propulsion with the topic of Combustion Chamber Okay, since we have already looked at the compressor, the next section in a gas turbine engine is a section called combustion chamber. Now, the learning outcomes for this particular topic is that students should be able to identify the main components and functions of combustion chamber. So you will be able to mean identify the main components as well as the basic functions of a combustion chamber. You also will be able to explain the design as well as the criteria of performance of combustion chamber. And later on, you will be able to compare the characteristics of different combustion chamber types and discuss the materials as well as the construction of a combustion chamber. In this particular topic of combustion chamber, it is divided into six subtopics. We will first look at the overview and then we will look into the combustion process, the fuel supply, types of combustion chamber, combustion chamber performance and materials. So in this particular video, we will only look into the overview. I will show you the figure 4.1 of a typical combustion chamber. Normally, a combustion chamber has the difficult task of burning large quantities of fuel supplied to the fuel spray nozzles with extensive volumes of air supplied by the compressor. We have already looked at the topic of compressor where the compressor prepare the air that are going to be supplied into the combustion chamber. And the combustion chamber will be releasing, rece releasing the heat in such manner that the air will be expanded and accelerated to give a smooth stream of uniformly heated gas at all conditions required by the next section, which is the turbine. This is a picture of an early combustion chamber. As highlighted earlier, the process of combustion will occur when air coming from the compressor that will be entering the combustion chamber. The air will go into these swirl veins and some of the air will also be supplied through dilution or secondary holes okay, we have the secondary holes and the fuel will be sprayed into the combustion chamber via fuel spray nozzle and combustion will occur at various stages in the primary zone and then it will then propagate throughout the combustion chamber into and will be released into the the bind section. So this task must be accomplished with the minimum loss in pressure. So basically, we want the pressure to be maintained. Okay, we want the pressure to be maintained or having minimum losses and with the maximum heat release for the limited space available. So there are two key, key things here, minimum loss in pressure and we want a maximum heat release. So you want to make sure there are less um, uh, pressure losses and high heat that will be released uh, in the combustion chamber. So the amount of fuel added to the air will also depend on the temperature rise required. So you, we want to maintain the pressure. Pressure we want to maintain and we want the temperature to increase. However, 
the maximum temperature limit so it we have a temperature limit normally in the range of 800 degree to 1700 degree celsius right it depends on the type of materials so if the materials are sustained can can sustain high temperature most likely you can reach up to 1700 degrees celsius but for early type of combustion chamber you have less prone to temperature type of material you can only um, have a temperature as low as 850 degrees celsius the air has already been heated to between 200 and 550 degrees by the work done during compression as we all know during the compression process the air will gain energy and it gives a temperature rise requirement of 650 to 1150 degrees from the combustion process so imagine the air already have some temperature here but it on, on, on uh, entering upon entering the uh, com, uh, combustion chamber stages and it will be further increased in the combustion chamber stage so what will happen basically since the gas temperature required at the turbine varies with engine thrust you want to vary the thrust the combustion chamber must also be capable of maintaining a stable and efficient combustion over a wide range of operating condition later we will discuss further on the primary air that goes into the combustion chamber as well as the cold dilution air that being supplied to complete the combustion process that's all for now we will continue on the combustion process in the following video happy viewing bye